Hello, my name is Kyle McCrowan. I'm here with Wyatt Mullen, and you're listening to another episode of Cascadia Mountain Weather. It's Thursday, January 4th, 2024, and with the first uh, week of 2024, we're finally looking at some real colder, stormier winter weather. So that's really exciting to see. First, we're going to take a look back at last year. Uh, 2023 was definitely one of the drier years around here. Uh, lots of areas in Washington, especially in the North Cascades, you know, we're in the top five, top 10 driest winters since 1895. So in the last 120, 130 years. The temperature departure was also pretty warm. You know, most of Washington we're looking at three to four degrees Fahrenheit above normal. Much of the U.S. was over five degrees above normal. And that has kind of left us with not a very good snowpack, definitely one of the worst in the last few decades, with a lot of areas below 50%. But there definitely is hope on the horizon, and why it's going to talk about that. So you know, we're in a new year, and it looks like winter's finally arriving. Um, we have a couple storms lined up in the next couple of days that are basically the first like good snow we've seen in maybe a month, honestly. Uh, maybe not quite that long, but... Uh, definitely starting to get more interesting. So you can see that we have these two storms. This um, is the satellite image from earlier today. And we have kind of this first storm that's moving through uh, Thursday night into Friday. And then over here on the left-hand side of the screen is the larger storm that's going to move through on Friday night. And that's going to be kind of bring our biggest surge of moisture um, and the best chance for some uh, nice accumulating snowfall. So that has prompted the National Weather Service to uh, put a winter weather advisory for um, especially the North Cascades uh, and the Olympics. And you can see this kind of here where this is, we're expecting most of the snow to fall kind of that uh, Friday afternoon to Saturday morning time frame, And really, especially in the North Cascades kind of uh, one to two feet of snow. Um, down south, uh, you might see a little bit less, maybe kind of in that uh, six to 12 inches of snowfall. Um, but very exciting, especially since this is going to be come with pretty low snow levels. Um, here's a highlight from the European model showing total snowfall through Sunday afternoon. So showing kind of those totals where we're seeing one to two feet, uh, especially kind of north of Snoqualmie Pass and down south more in that six to 10 inch range, although you might see more near the volcano. So uh, near Mount Rainier, you might see above a foot as well. Um, kind of show highlighting some of the higher resolution models that also show maybe some areas picking up maybe close to three feet by the end of uh, the weekend uh, in favored locations. Um, this is going to show the precipitation as we move through. Um, this is from the kind of University of Washington model, just showing. So here is uh, Thursday night. Um, moving through Friday morning, we are going to see some showers around Friday. Um, and then this big slug of moisture with lowering snow levels comes in Friday evening and especially overnight Friday. Um, so that's going to have relatively strong winds. Um, and that's when we're gonna see most of that. And that will basically move through by about seven to 10 a.m. on Saturday. And then we're gonna see kind of some convergent zones set up uh, and some more showers. Probably Sunday is gonna be the driest day. Um, there will be some showers still around, especially up in the North Cascades, even if they're not showing up here. Um, but it also is the best chance for um, some sun breaks. Here's looking at kind of total accumulated precipitation through 4 a.m. Monday. So this is everything that's gonna fall from Thursday night um, or actually even Thursday during the day through uh, Monday morning. You can see that kind of in this one to two inch range of precipitation, which then corresponds to uh, 12 to 24 inches of snow. Once again, you can see this focus north of Snoqualmie Pass. Um, so up near Stevens Pass, there's going to be quite a bit of snow um, and up near Mount Baker. And then it drops off once you go south towards Mount Rainier, although Mount Rainier will still get some decent, uh, but Crystal uh, might not see quite as much snow. Um, looking at some temperatures, so you can see this winter weather advisory. This is looking up uh, near Snoqualmie Pass. And temperatures are mostly going to be in kind of the 20s and maybe low 30s during the uh, week. 
Uh, this is for about 5,000 feet, but it's going to be a pretty similar story down near the pass level as well. Um, so it's not going to be frigid out there, um, but it will be a bit chilly. And the winds will be quite strong, especially Friday night. So take that into account if you're thinking about going out Saturday, is we're going to see some pretty strong southwesterly winds. Um, and that will kind of transition to more westerly and northwesterly as we go through Saturday. But winds could be in like the 50 to 60, 70 mile an hour gusts um, at those high elevation ranges. So you might see some wind effect on the snow and then it's gonna calm down, especially for Saturday into Sunday. So um, that will be pretty nice. Um, and then just looking at like, we might see a couple sun breaks around Saturday, but really Sunday is probably going to be your best day. And like, don't expect like clear conditions per se, but you might get to see some sun a little bit. Um, in terms of snow level, uh, that's really exciting is that we've had the precipitation, but it's been pretty high snow level so far. But now we're going to see it. It's right now it's about three to four thousand feet. Um, but it's going to drop down tonight and tomorrow to about uh, 2,500 feet and then 1,500 feet by Saturday, Sunday. Honestly, some of the models are even showing the chance of some snow levels maybe getting down about 500 feet um, on Sunday into Monday. So, uh, and you can see that here, kind of the Sunday, Monday time frame. So you could see snow, uh, maybe not accumulating, but some flakes in the air, even in the uh, foothills of the near Seattle. Uh, and then this is just highlighting this trend in the snow level. So right now we're about 3,000 feet, dropping to about 2,000 feet over uh, Saturday and then into Sunday, Monday, going to be near sea level before maybe bumping up, up again to about 2,000 feet uh, early next week. So this is the current avalanche conditions throughout the Cascades, courtesy of Northwest Avalanche Center. Um, and we'll take a deeper look at, for example, like Snoqualmie Pass. It's definitely going to be increasing with the heavy snowfall Friday evening into Saturday. Um, I definitely expect Sunday to be the better day, both in terms of snow stability and also weather and just like conditions to go out. Doesn't mean you can't have a lot of fun with touchier conditions, but, you know, NWAC is trying to highlight the potential for storm slab and wind slabs and uncertainty about how the new snow is going to react with the older layer. So definitely something to look out for. Keep in mind the strong southwest winds. This is just a reminder that although it's really exciting to see a lot of fresh snow, remember that we have not a very good base to start with, and there's still a lot of like exposed obstacles in the snow. Um, I think given the conditions we have, you know, it makes sense to look for more open terrain. However, that can be kind of challenging when you're trying to also minimize avalanche risk. So uh, typically when we see these bigger storm dumps, we go skiing in the trees, but in a lot of cases, there's not necessarily enough snow to go skiing in the trees it depends on the area so it can ma definitely make uh you know planning a little more challenging so you just got to keep an open mind and um try to look at things differently and hopefully find a good place to go skiing so what's going on in the long term Wyatt yeah so long term it's exciting like I kind of said winter has finally arrived um and what we can see here is this six to ten uh day outlook Looks like precipitation is going to be maybe slightly above normal. Um, and then temperatures, looks like there's a pretty good chance that we're going to be below normal, maybe even significantly below normal. Um, and so there's kind of, there's been some pretty wild model runs recently. Um, and so it's always good to like keep in mind that like weather models might show things that like are like have happened extremely rarely um, or, you know, maybe once every couple decades, but they almost always revert closer to like what you'd ex normally see. And so I just want to move through this. Um, this kind of highlights the uh, like kind of peaks and troughs um, where the, the troughs tend to lead to colder temperatures and store more storming patterns and more snow. And so what we can see here is this darker blue represents kind of these colder storms that are moving in this weekend that will bring some rain and some snow. Um, and then as we move later in the run, and this is the European model, you can see this really deep trough dig out um, over us. And if we move even for further, it is like, um, I mean, it shows the potential for quite cold temperatures. I think realistically next week, there is the chance of snow near sea level. Um, it's really hard to say at the moment what, how, like 
what sort of temperatures that will manifest as, like how long it will be cold. And also like, it doesn't like, usually if we get really cold, we don't see a ton of precipitation as well. So we could go into something where we're quite cold with temperatures barely getting above freezing even uh, in the population centers, um, but we might not see a, a lot of snow. And so like the ski areas might get this kind of bump of snow and then some early next week, and then they might be dry. So just something to keep in mind, even if it gets cold. Finally, we'd like to give a huge thank you and shout out to our Patreon supporters. We just launched our Patreon a few weeks ago, and this enables us to help, you know, continue to deliver great content. We have some other types of videos outside of the weekly weather videos that we're working on. So um, our Patreon here, why don't you click on that? Uh, for $5 a month, uh, you can get access to more detailed recreation recommendations. So um, we do a few things each week. One, we show the different links from the video in a post, but then we also show recreation recommendations where we go into a little more depth about like different zones, different types of terrain to look at and more specific timing. Um, so if you find that sort of information really helpful for you to plan, um, you know, you don't have to watch the video. You can just get that information on the go in your email inbox. Uh, we really encourage you to take a look at our Patreon. You can get to it at CascadiaMountainWeather.com. We'll also link to it in our show notes. Um, and we really, really appreciate the support from each and every person. So thank you very much for listening to another episode and, you know, cross, let's cross our fingers, hope for some cold and some snow, and hopefully you get out and enjoy the fresh snow. Thank you.